The Sloth Investor's Bite-Sized Summary of A Wealth of Common Sense by Ben Carlson. A Wealth of Common Sense is one of the best books a beginner investor can read. Why? Well, as the title suggests, the book is full of common sense, practical advice, and leaves out the unnecessary topics often found in other investment books. Summary point one, the importance of doing nothing. Okay, so the sloth investor simply had to begin with the importance of doing nothing is my first summary point. After all, what is it that sloths are best known for? Remaining inactive and, quite simply, doing nothing for most of their day. Just like the sloth investor, Ben Carlson also recognizes the importance of a less-is-more approach to investing. In A Wealth of Common Sense, he writes, A patient, disciplined, long-term strategy isn't easy because most of the time it requires you, the investor, to basically sit on your hands and do nothing. This may sound easy, but for many doing something, anything is much easier because it gives you the feeling of control. In most areas of our lives, trying harder is great advice. But trying harder does not mean doing better in the financial markets. In fact, trying harder is probably one of the easiest ways to achieve below average performance. Fidelity Investments, an investment management company with trillions in assets under management, performed a study to determine which of their accounts had done the best. They were trying to determine the traits or attributes of their investors that led to the best performance. The study's conclusions were fascinating. Fidelity found that the investor accounts that were completely forgotten about by their account holders ended up with the best performance. Why? Well, the owners of these investment accounts didn't tinker with them. They didn't trade in and out of them. They simply forgot they existed, so they didn't make any changes in their portfolios. Summary point two, the importance of long-term thinking. What's the fourth bedrock principle of the sloth investor? It's time the market. The modern world has undoubtedly conditioned so many of us to immediate gratification. However, within the domain of investing, patience is critically key to one's success. Take a moment to reflect and think about the achievements in your life. How many of those achievements have been attained over a short time period? Driving a car, riding a bike, mastering a musical instrument, you name it, invariably these skills are typically acquired over a long time duration. It's typically the case that the short-term application of effort doesn't immediately yield positive results. Instead, sustained effort over a longer time horizon produces the results that you desire. In A Wealth of Common Sense, Ben Carlson states, Extend your time horizon for as long as your circumstances dictate and allow the magic of compound interest to do the heavy lifting for you. There's no need to worry about the next week, month, quarter, or year with your long-term capital. Individuals have the luxury of thinking, and hopefully acting, in terms of decades, an unheard of time frame on Wall Street. The ability to be patient and disciplined while extending your time horizon can be a huge advantage. Summary point three, understanding market history. A solid understanding of market history will help you to commit to a long time horizon, the previous summary point. Without firm grasp of history, investors are very often likely to repeat the past mistakes that others have made. The stock market is cyclical by nature, and yet many investors forget this. In A Wealth of Common Sense, Ben Carlson states, Although the future will always be different than the past, you can still use history to guide your actions from a probabilistic standpoint. A historical view can, or should, also be comforting when things get really bad during a recession or market crash. The basic behavior of market participants is little changed over time. So learning as much about market history as possible is one of the best ways to develop the correct mindset to keep your behavior in check. Summary point four, dollar cost averaging. Wouldn't it be great if we humans had a crystal ball? It would make life so much easier. Whether it's knowing how your favorite sports team is going to perform in their league or knowing exactly what the weather is going to be on a vacation, the presence of a crystal ball in our lives would certainly make life much easier. However, as we know, the reality is that humans have to make do with an imperfect understanding of the future. Unfortunately, the mistake that many investors make is that they attempt to predict the future movement of the stock market. Whether it's watching a financial news channel, listening to a friend, or quite simply going with their gut, some investors overcomplicate the investment process by varying the degree to which they invest on a monthly basis. Pursuing such a strategy can have a negative effect on your portfolio. Instead, Ben Carlson advocates a process known as dollar cost averaging. So what is dollar cost averaging? Quite simply, dollar cost averaging means to invest a fixed amount of money into a particular investment at regular intervals, typically monthly or quarterly. 
The fear of entering the market at the wrong time can lead to inaction or hasty decisions. Dollar cost averaging smooths out fluctuations, as you buy more shares when prices fall and fewer shares when they rise. This is the strategy's cost averaging effect. Although he's not the first investment writer to write about this process, he does indeed write wisely about its benefits in a wealth of common sense. He states, The point of dollar cost averaging isn't to perfectly time the market, but to admit that you don't have the ability or emotional control to try to time the market. Summary point five, international diversification. Remember how I stated at the beginning of the previous summary point that we humans lack a crystal ball. Well, despite the absence of a crystal ball, a significant number of investors continue to favor an inclination towards home bias in the composition of their portfolios. Home bias refers to the tendency of some investors to prefer investing in the stock market of their home country as opposed to foreign stock markets. You may be familiar with the term, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Investors that overinvest in their home market, otherwise known as their domestic market, are guilty of doing this. Home bias affects many investors from around the globe. In a 2017 paper by Vanguard entitled The Global Case for Strategic Asset Allocation and an Examination of Home Bias, the company reported on the fact that, on average, Canadian investors allocated 59% of their portfolios to their home market. This is despite the fact that the Canadian equity market accounted for only around 3-4% to of the global equity market. The data is even more striking for Australian investors. Despite the fact that the Australian stock market accounted for only 2-3% to of the global stock market, Australian investors, on average, allocated 67% of their portfolios to their domestic stock market. Perhaps the most notorious example of home bias comes from Japan. Many years of high returns in the immediate post-war period compelled a significant number of Japanese investors to become complacent and succumb to home bias. This was a mistake because in 1990, the Japanese benchmark index, the Nikkei 225, plunged by more than 60% and hasn't recovered since. In A Wealth of Common Sense, Ben Carlson favors international diversification over home bias. He states, Do you really want to risk a Japan-like scenario with your life savings? Global diversification will protect investors from the harm caused by a single country or region's economy or stock market with expected returns to stocks being fairly similar across the different countries, it makes little sense to try to pick and choose exactly which single market represents the best opportunity in the future. Diversification is the antidote for a cloudy crystal ball about the future winners. Think globally with your portfolio because no one knows where the best and worst performing asset classes will come from in the future. Let's take a moment now to reflect on the third bedrock principle of the sloth investor. It's owning the world. So why is this such an important principle for Mr. Sloth? Well, quite simply, it's because the Sloth investor recognizes that quality companies exist in every corner of the globe. An investor that overinvests in one specific geographic region is making a mistake by limiting their exposure to the other regions of the world. Summary point six, think in terms of your future self. Investing can broaden your life choices. Unfortunately, this is something that not enough people recognize. Quite simply, your opportunities in life will compound the earlier you start investing. Remember, wealth generation creates choice. This is also something that Ben Carlson writes about in A Wealth of Common Sense. He states, Younger investors need to think in terms of what that future wealth can bring them, specifically freedom and flexibility. The greatest thing that money can buy is time to do whatever it is that makes you happy. If you're forced to work later in life doing something you don't love to do for a paycheck, that's not a fun scenario for a young person to consider. Whenever the most annoying part of your life is, use that as your motivation to save. If you hate your job, save enough money so you don't have to work for a boss that you don't like. If you want to travel the world, save enough to go wherever your heart desires. Think in terms of your future self. Summary point seven. The importance of emotional intelligence. Focus on what you can control. Slots are known for having poor hearing. For sloth investors, though, the inability to hear well is useful. Let me explain. The world of investment generates a lot of noise. Financial news channels, sensationalist headlines, frantic trading room floors, economic forecasts, all of this generates a tremendous amount of noise for modern investors. However, sloth investors recognize the importance of tuning out the noise and simply staying the course. After all, there's only so much we can control. In a wealth of common sense, 
Ben Carlson writes about the mistake that a significant number of investors make in focusing on areas that are completely out of their control. He states, There is a laundry list of complaints investors spit out on a daily basis. Inflation, the actions of the President, Congress, the Federal Reserve, the economy, tax policy, the actions of either political party, the level of interest rates. The list could go on forever. These things all have something in common. You have no control over them whatsoever. You can't pick up the phone and complain to the president because you don't like his economic policies. Having the highest IQ in the room isn't the most important thing. Having the correct temperament is far more important than intellect over time. There are plenty of intelligent people who make extremely irrational decisions when dealing with their finances. Okay, that's the Sloth Investor's summary of A Wealth of Common Sense by Ben Carlson. The book is undoubtedly one of my favorite investment books, containing a wealth of actionable advice. Which summary point resonated the most with you? If you have time, please let me know in the comment box below. To keep up to date with the latest content from The Sloth Investor, whether this be my book reviews, my podcast, or other video content, please remember to subscribe to this channel.